Join our hosts as they step aboard the Seaborne FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck, a bay boat that offers loads of style without sacrificing economy and versatility. The Seaborne FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck has an overall length of 21 feet 9 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 250. Designed for inshore and offshore conditions, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 2,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 50 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. George Rick, if you notice in South Florida, bay boats are extremely popular. I own a bay boat, and I feel like that's because they're easy to trailer, they're affordable for the most part, and it's a good starting boat for the guy who's maybe thinking about going bigger. And today, we're on the Seaborne FX22. Yeah, Lori, you're right. And the, the whole theme behind bay boats, the reason they exist, get the maximum amount of usage out of the minimum amount of commitment. And this boat certainly fills the bill. Well, we couldn't have a better day to test out a bay boat, guys. I mean, it's blowing 25 to 30 miles an hour, and this kind of boat is a day saver on a day like this. What do you say we go do a little fishing? The FX series of bay boats from Seaborn represent a real value-priced option for somebody in the market for a new boat. Each FX bay comes with all of the quality features this style of boat has to offer, but won't cost any more than your typical name brand flat skiff. A perfect day weather-wise for testing a bay boat greeted us and 20 to 25 mile an hour winds immediately gave us a chance to see how she rides. The double step hull really liked to ride up above the chop. Once we found the comfortable cruising speed and trimmed the engine out a little, she got up on the rear step and smoothed out beautifully. She got us into the shelter side of a mangrove shoreline to start fishing without incident and we set out to do a little fishing. The 13 inch draft let us get into the shallower sheltered areas of the intracoastal waterway without any problem and we were able to stick the power pole quietly and work some creek runouts as though we were in a flat skiff. The difference being there was four of us fishing at the same time. The console was arranged for two behind the helm with each having independently adjustable seats which was extremely comfortable. A pair of MFD screens on the helm face was a nice touch and you don't typically see that on a bay boat of this size. For anglers who like to stick the pole anchor on a flat and step out of the boat to wade fish, an integrated fiberglass platform on the port side transom corner offers an easy step into the shallows and features a fold-out stainless boarding ladder for swimmers in deeper water. Her gunnels are just the right height to keep the water in a choppy bay out of the boat and keep you comfortable, all the while still being low enough to make sneaking around inshore on a trolling motor a breeze. She's got a massive front casting deck with the bonus of a performance molded in cooler that will keep ice for days, as well as serving as a great step up for us old guys to access that elevated platform. A 102 inch beam makes this a big 22 foot bay boat and a 13 inch draft means you'll be able to fish in skinny water. A pair of 32 gallon recirculating live wells mean that that limit of redfish you're waiting to weigh in will be alive and kicking when you hit the weigh in dock. Now this was really cool. You can actually open up the console to get to your electronics by removing the whole front piece. It's right in front of the helm seat. Whenever I have to work on my boat, I usually have to grab one of my kids because they are a lot smaller than me and they can reach their hands in those tiny little spaces. Well, with this opening, I can actually get in there, and all my kids would have to do now is sit there and hold the flashlight. Now, a feature that I have never seen before are these removable rod racks. This was really cool. Not every day is a fishing day, so being able to remove these racks gives you more storage room. We had a Ford Livewell seat in front of the console. We actually did not use the Livewell today, but I did use it as a seat and it was extremely comfortable. A newly designed cockpit moved the seating from the outboard corners on the previous models inside to the center of the transom casting deck. This design change relocates your passengers out of the way of any spray that might make it into the boat during a windy bay crossing. Beneath the seat is wide access to your build systems. The seat also folds out of the way, easily turning the rear deck into a casting space large enough for a pair of anglers to work around each other. The new deck style also makes it possible to add a pair of live wells to opposite corners of the transom to make a total of three separate wells for multiple storage options. 
Guys, today proved why bay boats are so popular. We were not getting out that inlet, but it did not stop us from what we wanted to do today. We had rain, we had horrible wind, but we still got to fish and we had areas that we could go hide in. You're right, Lori, and this FX22 did everything we asked of it today, and my streak of running these FX boats from Seaborn remains intact. What a boat. It has been a great boat for us. And how much rougher weather do we want to fish in any boat today? We don't. Our mission was to get a day's fishing in. We did it. We had a blast doing it. I'm a fan of the FX-22, and I got to tell you, Seaborn builds it better every year.